Please welcome our two players. First, from Canada, Benny Billinger. And from the United States, Evan Pavelski. Good luck, you guys. Go ahead and shake hands. Have a great match. And casters, why don't you take us into it? Yeah, Benny Billinger from Canada, as you see on your screen, the 2018 Latin America International Champion. He won a regional championship this year in Philadelphia. He also made the finals of this very tournament last year, the North American Oof. International, and has a top four at the Latin American Internationals in 2017. So, so many accomplishments, really a just and a fantastic player here. And you see the deck that uh, you were talking about with that Pheromos and Buzzwool, the Zapdos, Jirachi, Zipstrika. We've seen um, decks like this a lot throughout the weekend. And in a, I have no doubt that it'll be an exciting match in the hands of a player like Benny. We also have a little profile for Evan here to talk about his, some of his accomplishments. All right, 2019 Memphis Regional Champion, top 16 Madison Regionals in this year. Top four at the Origin Special Event just last weekend, and then a top eight at Collins Hill Regionals as well. And there you have his deck, Spirit Tomb, Umbreon, Honchkrow, has that Jirachi for some ability, uh, stability. <laughs> Yeah, the top four at the Origin Special Event just last weekend. The, the grind truly never stops for the best players in the world. Always competing, always wanting to prove themselves, win win more points, win more prizes, and kind of say, yes, you know, I am truly one of the best. And I think both of these players have proven that they are indeed one of the best in their division. Yeah, if we couldn't see Spirit Tomb in the finals for Masters Division, I am glad we're seeing it here in Juniors. Such a unique card to come into the Pokemon TCG that building spite ability, just placing damage counters, and then just making your attack stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Yeah, it's been interesting to see Spirit Tomb actually be played in kind of various different strategies. Of course, Spirit Tomb is always, you know, it's the same card, it's kind of doing the same thing, but the strategies it's been, we've seen it be used in throughout the weekend have been a lot different. Um, and we're really excited to see if Evan can use it to uh, become international champion. Yeah, so the biggest thing for this matchup is when that Ferramosa Buzzwool GX is going to come into play. Uh, it is essentially a free two prizes against any Spear Tomb as long as the one damage counter is on it. So you have to be mindful of that. You're really playing, if you're Evan, you're playing this single prize attacking deck. You're not really going to want to play Honchkrow, especially against uh, something like a Tapu Koko GX since it's weak to lightning. Uh, so you're really going to rely on the Spear Tomb. And with that, this Veramosa Buzz will could steal the game later on. Yeah, this is definitely going to be something that both players are going to be aware of. Again, these are some of the best players in the world in their division. They have made it all the way here to the finals. They are going to be aware of everything the other one can do, everything the other one has to offer, and that you're going to see some absolutely high-level strategic play out of these juniors. Looks like Looks they are here. getting their prizes down. Benny putting his prizes down. Going to go ahead and take a look at those momentarily. All right, what are, what are we looking at here, Jeremy? All right, well, you see that Blitzel and the Drifloom as well. Uh, Drifloom is one of the cards he is playing for uh, Weezing matchup. Not really useful here. Yeah, not, uh, we'll see Weezing in the seniors final, I think, a little bit later. But yeah. not going to be too relevant here. You can also go ahead and take a look at Evan's prizes. Nest Ball, a Skateboard. Oh, there's that Hustle, Hustle Belt, Belt card. One of the tools that just is a perfect combination with a card like Spirit Tomb. You damage yourself to do, deal more damage, and then if you have 30 HP or less, you do 60 more damage. The synergies we're seeing here on the Sunday stage at the North American International Championship. Looks like both players are just about ready to begin. The handshake is there. And here we go, Flip folks. The actives and... Champion, championship Sunday starts right now. Juniors finals will have a champion crowned after 75 minutes. Looks like Benny is going to kick things off here with a nest ball. Uh, pretty common turn one play from these decks. So you mentioned the power of that Pheromosa and Buzzwool GX earlier. What else is what else is Benny kind of looking for here in the early game to press his advantage and kind of get things started? So the one benefit he has in this matchup is Zapdos really just knocks out almost everything Evan has to counter. Uh, he's going to really have to rely on cards like Umbreon to kind of swing the prize trade here. 
So you think that Benny is pretty favored in this matchup then? With I would say so. The power but, of the Zapdos? But looking at his deck with all of these tech cards, the Ditto Prism, there's a 2-2, two, two, or no, sorry, a 1-2 Zebstrika, and then the Nihiligo, the Pheromosa Buswell, the Spear Tomb. He really only plays two Zapdos for being a Zapdos Ultra Beast deck. Okay, so interesting. Two Zapdos a little bit lower than we're expected to see. Could end up hurting him here if he uh, is relying on Zap Zapdos heavily. For now, we're seeing that switch into the Jirachi Stellar Wish of Skateboard, the Jirachi Stellar Wish of Skateboard we've seen time and time again throughout this tournament. Uh, really kind of the ideal turn one start. Now we're seeing a Cynthia from Benny going to go ahead and reset his hand and draw six fresh cards. Yeah, Jirachi, the best card for this Zapdos deck just enables your whole strategy. You're, you want to draw your cards early, but then from then on, as long as you just find a Guzma every turn, I feel like you're going to win the game. So here is the fresh six from Benny. Of course, you would like to see that Lily turn one, but Cynthia is no slouch either. Oh, we have another Jirachi, and this is a great play for going first, just being able to get every free card that you can. Yeah, we've consistently seen the uh, skateboard be used to retreat into different Jirachis, maybe using the card Switch or Guzmar, some other effect, just to have more options with your Jirachi. That Stellar Wish ability is so powerful throughout the early game, and really a strategy um, and a source of card advantage that a lot of these decks have been relying on throughout this weekend. And what did he grab off that Jirachi? Was Guzma. It? Guzma, yeah, and there you go. That's really all you really need. Now, Benny is passing the turn to Evan, who has a Jirachi of his own in the active position. I suspect we'll be doing some stellar wishing right about now. Five cards from the top of the deck. Looks like a Viridian Forest is going to be the find for Evan. Yeah, Viridian Forest, a card that is a double-edged sword, like I've been saying. Uh, it helps your opponent out as well, especially when they're trying to find his only four lightning energy. Yeah, really interesting. In some matchups, the Viridian Forest can actually be completely one-sided. We saw that yesterday a few times in the Masters Division, where, where uh, we were playing Viridian Forest versus decks with only special energy, and just kind of, you know, it's, at that point, it's just free. Uh, but in matchups like this, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, and I think the big card for Evan in this matchup is going to be that Black Market Prism Stadium, uh, being able to deny your opponent prize cards off of your dark Pokemon with a dark energy attached to it. That means... Your main attacker in Spiritomb and Umbreon, if you can just keep that stadium in play, Benny might just not be able to take prizes. And after this Stellar Wish, we do see a Cynthia on Evan's side as well. Both players starting with pretty similar starts. Uh, Evan only with that lone Jirachi in play at this point. Going to have to hope that the Cynthia, six cards off the Cynthia bring him something to play. Yeah, uh, Evan's deck is one that plays four copies of Professor Elm's Lecture. Would have loved to see that here turn one see it in his hand now, but after the Cynthia not being able to play it. Yep, there's Eevee. Spirit Tomb is going to put a damage counter on itself, of course. You see it on your screen now, kind of the, the backbone. Four copies of Spirit Tomb in Evan's deck. Yeah, building Spite probably in the running uh, to try to take Thunderclap Zone's uh, best ability name. <laughs> Absolutely. We see Evan pass the turn back to Benny. Jirachi wakes up. A, a pair of uh, sleep flips here in between turns. Yeah, you see uh, players often forget to do the sleep flip, but that's really just because these decks play escape boards, switches, uh, escape ropes, and it really just sometimes does not matter. Yeah. You have to do it. Especially going into your opponent's turn, it's easy to forget because yeah. you're not even concerned about you know, being able to use Stellar Wish on the next turn yet. We do see an Ultra Ball from Benny discarding a Spear Tomb of his own as well as a Lightning Energy. And there it is. Zapdos comes down, the namesake of the deck. Really just one of the most efficient attackers we've had this format, especially comboed with that Guzma supporter. And yet another escape board for Benny is going to hit the field attached to that active Jirachi. Lily is going to go ahead and draw three cards. Some, some, some of those cards are going to fly around the stage a little bit. Yeah, those three cards were pretty good. I believe it was Zebstrika, Beast Energy, and the Buzzwolf Feromosa. Uh, not a bad three cards here for Benny off that Lily. You see Benny using uh, Evan's Viridian Forest to his advantage, getting rid of the Tapu Koko GX and deciding to turn it into a Lightning Energy. See that Zeb Strika 
on your screen now. Really a good source of card advantage from those decks. And the first knockout goes to Benny with that Zapdos that we talked about being so powerful and so important in this matchup. Yeah, and staring down this field, Benny has a mass turned to uh, it, it's really scary. You got the double Jirachi escape board, the Z Striker on the bench, and then that Buzzswole threatening to knock out anything with that Beast Energy in his hand if uh, Evan continues to take prizes. So if you're Evan here, the game, maybe it's only been the first couple turns of the game, but you are facing down a lot of pressure. You know you may be involved in a kind of a bad matchup here. What are you looking for over this next turn or two to hopefully kind of get back into this game and uh, put up a defense? Well, you see it on the screen there. Umbreon from Lost Thunder using its Retaliate for one Dark Energy, 30 plus 90 damage if one of your Pokemon was knocked out by damage from an attack during their last turn. That is a perfect knockout for Zapdos because just one energy can energy evolution like he chooses to now, not even having to evolve it normally. Yeah, one of the benefits of this EV is just as long as you have the same energy type as the uh, evolution in your deck, you can just go ahead and find it makes the deck a lot more consistent as we see. Evan just really, really kind of going off here, filling his bench uh, with a bunch of Spiritomb, again, finding that Umbreon, making lots of big plays here, trying to get right back into this game. Yeah, uh, this is the kind of turn one he wanted, but it doesn't really matter. Turn two, still really good. You lose a turn of building spite on all those spirit tomb, but in a matchup like this, you actually don't need the full damage knockout for that spirit tomb. There's no tag team GXs or regular GX Pokemon other than that Tapu Koko, but Benny was just discard that last turn. Right, both of these players kind of playing the old-fashioned way with single prize attackers across the board. All right, and we are You're building a, a lot of spite on the bench. dice there. And Evan is angry. Spite. And here and we then go. Then we're going to get the knockout. Prizes are tied 5-5. Five to five. Benny Billinger, Evan Pavaleski. Two players, one title. Lots of Jirachis, though. Yeah, lots of Jirachis, lots of, lots of Spiritomb. Looks like... Thunder Mountain Prism, a Lily off the top of the deck for that Stellar Wish. Benny's hand is quite clogged, though, so it looks like just a switch and maybe a spin the wheel again with another Stellar Wish. Yeah, this is a play that we've consistently seen uh, throughout this tournament, just being able to, at the cost of no attack, no, you know, no energy, just a free ability usage and even you know, free retreat with things like a skateboard, just chaining these Jirachis over and over again. You get to dig so deep into your deck, you get to look at so many cards and just find pretty much exactly what you need. All right, well, he hits the Nest Ball that he's been looking for off that Stellar Wish, gets his second Zapdos, and depending on... If he has Electro Power in hand, we could see a pretty good turn here. And so is this how you predict this matchup going? Is just kind of both players trading knockouts back and forth? Um, just kind of because they're dealing with low HP Pokemon basically across the board, just both players being able to have really exciting, explosive turns taking prizes? Oh, wow. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but Buzz, uh, Feramosa Buzzwool gets discarded off that Viridian Forest. Uh, maybe a little innocuous, but Benny does play two Rescue Stretcher in his deck, especially with that low Zapdos count. Yeah, so before he really has a um, chance to use it, he's just going to go ahead and put it in the discard pile, not worry about it all too much, and that Zapdos is going to become active. Not quite score a knockout here, but deal 80 damage to that Umbreon. Yeah, Benny only having one Electro Power in his hand, and not enough to take the knockout here, so opts to save it. And it does severely limit this Umbreon's damage output as well. So we might see Spiritomb start attacking. You can see the power of the Viridian Forest combined with so many basic energy from both players, really, just letting them cash in cards they didn't need in the moment and uh, make sure they hit all of their energy drops throughout the game. We even see Guzma in hand for Evan here. Could be eyeing down that Zeev Strika. Looks like the Guzma is going to be played. It's just... The target that is in question here. Oh, opts for a Jirachi. Definitely an easier knockout to take with the Spirit Tomb. So we're gonna build some spite here, switch the dice, build the damage up. Uh, and this is where discarding the Feramosa Buzzswole this early kind of gives Evan a little bit of wiggle room with his building spite because 
something like a 30-30 snipe could be detrimental to him. And there is the second knockout of the game for Evan. Four prizes remaining, taking out one of those Jirachi that we've seen do so much work for Benny over these first few turns. Another Jirachi is the draw for Benny. So he'll have access to another one if he wants it. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and Stellar Wish. See a switch again. And we might see another retreat to the second Jirachi in his hand. He could be digging for something. Yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, I gotta imagine that's what we'll see. We also have the Zapdos there, so gonna need to switch into an attacker at some point, but I suspect because of the escape board, we're just gonna see that retreat, like we just said, into the Jirachi. Another Stellar Wish, and again, this is just, we've talked about it all game. We've really talked about it all tournament, how powerful it is. All right, is. there is the rescue stretcher he was searching for. He's able to get that Ferromosal Buzzwool back if he wants to, and he could have just been playing Evan this entire time. Like, I'm gonna discard this to make you do that extra 10 damage to that Spear Tomb on the bench. And now I can start and just take two prizes here. Next turn, Beast Game for two more prizes. And there is that big Tag Team GX Pokemon you just mentioned, Pheromosa Buzzwool. Rescue Stretcher was exactly the play. And there is the big double knockout, three prizes remaining for Benny, this Tag Team GX, the only one in his deck, and it's doing a lot of work here. Yeah, Jet Punch, an attack that you might have seen before. Uh, it has always been good in this game, and it's not going to change anytime soon. Especially in a spot like this where your opponent's also playing those low HP Pokemon, oh, although no. that Mew's going to say something about that. A turn late here for Evan, but finally gets the Mew on the board. So Jet Punch won't be as viable of a strategy, but remember, this Pheromos Buzzwool has a lot of HP. It's going to be pretty tough to take down. Yeah, it sure is here as we see Evan trying to kind of reload, get back in this game. Goodbye, Viridian Forest. Yeah, Black Market Prism coming down. And that will mean if Benny wants to take the knockout on the active Spear Tomb, the one that's doing the most damage and doing the most work, he won't be able to take a prize. Yeah, indeed, that Black Market Prism Star you mentioned earlier could be a big part of uh, Evan's strategy here. If he can stick that, he can deny the prizes. And in a back-and-forth match like this, uh, being able to deny any prizes you can really does matter. And so here we might see an Anguish Cry for 70 damage, it looks like. Looks like that is exactly what's going to happen. Action is back on Benny now. A full bench, two Jirachi that, of course, speaking of the Jirachi here, one becomes active again. I think that's three switch and three turns. So, so many uh, stellar wishes. You see the players building their decks and, uh, you know, using their plays. There's the fourth switch, too, if he wants it. But he's going to go ahead and take something a little bit better in that Guzma. Yeah, could opt to even Guzma the Mew and Beast game it if he wants to take two prizes, go down to one, and then just win the game on the next turn with something like another Guzma or even Escape Rope. But first, we're going to see, again, the retreat. Stellar Wish, we've been repeating ourselves this entire time, how powerful Stellar Wish is. This one going to find an Electro Power, I believe? Yep, Electro Power in hand. That means he's just building up. He now has two, so Zapdos will be able to take down something like a Rangaroo if he chooses to. And there's the Beast Game GX, GX taking an extra prize flipped. for his knockout. And just like that, Benny with only a single prize remaining, two Evans for the big tag team GX Pokemon in the active position. And it looks like we're going to build right. Spite here. 30 damage on each of the Spiritombs. Now, one thing Evan's going to really need to do is get a Dark Energy on a Bench Spiritomb. His only real way to not lose to something like Escape Rope is to bring up someone that, when it gets knocked out, won't give up a prize with that Black Market Prism. Yeah, exactly. He kind of forced Benny for a Guzma. Yeah, Benny only has the one prize remaining, but of course that Black Market Prism could prevent that for a few turns. Going to have to see. Hustle Belt, Rainbow comes down on the active, looking for some big damage here. Hustle Belt, of course, on the card that you see all the time, but just goes slots right perfectly into the Spirit Tomb decks. Yeah, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Let's see. Anguish Cry is doing 
130 damage. That Hustle Belt adding 60 more. That's 190 damage. Actually, is that enough? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sounds like 190 to me. All right, Cynthia, brand new six. But again, I believe Benny has it locked up in his hand, has the escape rope, double electro power. Anything on the bench can be knocked out and will give up a prize or just top decks the Guzma. <laughs> now there's the and escape there rope go. and there oh, is oh, the there we handshake. Let's show him the electro power first. Benny Billinger is up one game here over, over Evan Velsky. Uh, one yeah. game away from uh, kind of coming in here, winning the international championship, fell one match short um, in this position uh, last year is Benny. Now he's just like, okay, I'm only one game away. Can I do it? I he's need, hungry. I, I, need, I need, want to avenge my loss from last year and become an international champion of North America. Yeah, already has won an international championship, has that under his belt. He is no stranger to the spotlight here, but to win one of the biggest tournaments in the season, he's going to need to win one more game. Evan, of course, an accomplished player in his own right, will be needing to win these next two games. And what needs to go different? Evan now gets to go first. But what needs to go different um, for him to actually win this next game? Well, now that he knows about the Faramosa Buzzwell GX, Mew should be a top priority. We saw that big tag team Pokemon take four prizes for Benny there in two turns. Yeah, we actually saw the Mew kind of unfortunately come down just one turn too late. That Mew had already been on the board. That game could have been very, very different, um, but was not protecting the bench versus that jet punch, and uh, that eventually led to the downfall. Yeah, and of course, the ability to use essentially two Stellar Wishes every turn. Benny didn't even need to use Sprint from his Z Striker that he got in play turn two. Yeah, just looking at so many extra cards, drawing so many extra cards with those Jirachis. We've seen that Jirachi chain be amazing all weekend. It's no different here in the finals. Players are drawing their opening hands. Looks like a mulligan oh. from Evan here. That would have been a pretty sweet hand, that turn one Professor Elms lecture, but... Actually, double mulligan. Yep. So both players are going to reshuffle their hand in, draw up to back up to seven each. Of course, yeah, so. as I mentioned, Evan will be getting to go first game two. Yeah, turn one Professor Elm's lecture would be ideal, uh, but he has to be careful with that Mew because it's the whole strategy of Benny's deck is Guzma things, take a knockout with Zapdos. Mew only has 60 HP, pretty easy to take a knockout, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on your rescue stretchers to keep it up. So he's really going to have to choose the perfect moment to play it down the turn before Benny's going to want to go for Faramosa Buzzful. Yeah, definitely. don't want to expose the Mew. Such an important card for a specific situation in this matchup before you really have to. Looks like some basics were found. Yeah, looks like a pretty good hand here for Evan. He does have that Jirachi in the active spot, and I believe a Professor Elms lecture as well. Zapdos Prize, Shrine of Punishment. Yeah, and that Zapdos Prize is going to be huge. It's near the top, meaning Benny only has one in his deck for this almost the entire game. It's going to be huge. We're going to look at the other side of the prizes. Two uh, Professor Elms Lecture and that Ditto Prism Star, as well as two Cynthia. Oh, but Evan prizes. starts that Mew here. He's like, OK, I got to have it now. I know what happened last game. All right, game two here in the finals with Junior Vision of the International Championship is underway. We see a dueling Jirachis on either side. We see that Spirit Tomb, that Mew that you just mentioned. Ditto Prism Star, and the prize is for Evan, unfortunately, but Benny does start with it here on his bench. Yeah, we've talking about Zorark being one of the top five strongest cards ever printed. I'm sure this Jirachi eventually will try to stake its claim. It is one great card. Yeah, absolutely. You, you did just Watch the, watch the replays from this weekend. Watch the <laughs> matches for the rest of the day, and I'm sure you'll see the power of Jirachi. Looks like that Poke Gear missed. Well, Those he does have right the there. other one. He got the one off the Cellar Wish as well. But again, a miss. Wow, I didn't see the rest of his hand. Does he not have a supporter? Uh, I believe he has a Professor Elms Lecture, but he's really looking for a draw supporter for next turn. Oh, wait. No, he doesn't. It was a Guzma. 
He does have the escape board, so again, he's going to be able to sell a wish. Maybe Jirachi can get him out oh. of the situation. He finds the Professor Elm's lecture off of the second Stellar Wish. It's something. Yeah, that's going to be his supporter for the turn. Of course, you on your screen now. Switch for three Pokemon with 60 hit points or less. Double Spirit Tomb and Eevee are going to be the selections for Evan. Uh, e again, Eevee is one of the Pokemon that you can actually just keep in your hand and surprise it uh, out of nowhere with that energy evolution ability. And that way you have your maximization of building spite. Yeah, and Evan is choosing to do just that, keeping the Eevee in hand, filling his bench with Spiritomb, using the ability. Damage counters are placed, and now action is back on Benny for his first turn. Immediately starts things off with a Stellar Wish. Yeah, looking at Benny's hand, it was pretty weak. Really needed that Cynthia off the top, and he was able to get it. Has the Zapdos, has a rainbow he can choose to attach. And with that switch, he'll be able to take a knockout. And this is what the Zapdos deck does, but this is risky opting to play the Cynthia instead of the guaranteed rainbow energy. He'll need to draw a lightning off of this six cards to be able to take the knockout. Let's see if he gets it. Yeah, uh, kind of a risky play there by Benny, but also a very aggressive one, just immediately switching into the Zapdos. These next six cards, will he find an energy to play? One, two, three, four. He does have that five, Thunder Mountain six. Prism and the rainbow again. So a couple options here, but he will be able to take the knockout. So it looks like he paid off for him, it paid off for him, and he's going to choose to attach the rainbow and just take the knockout here. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a knockout on the Drachi without the escape board, and Evan promotes the one with. Does he hit a supporter here? As the Hustle Belt could take the knockout on the Zapdos, and I think that's what he's going to do. Does he have the energy? He does. He does. So the EV is going to join the party now, attach. Oh, doesn't even need the Hustle Belt. Umbreon with its retaliate attack, just taking the knockout, 120 damage. Evan is going to go ahead and take a look through his deck, find that Umbreon, and now this is the only Zapdos that Benny has available to him is going to be knocked out here. Yeah, I do believe he has a stretcher in hand to reoccur it, but with that one up in the top of the prizes too, I think it's going to be yeah, it's a just gonna pretty be rough road. Whole game. See a retreat into the Umbreon. Building Spite yet again. And there's the knockout. Players tied five prizes, two five. Jirachi becomes the active Pokemon for Benny. And ooh, three Electro Power in hand from Benny here. Stellar Wish is looking to find something. So there was no Stretcher in his hand. Double Stretcher in the Stellar Wish. Ooh, he is opting either the Stretcher or the Nest Ball. If he chooses the Nest Ball looking for that Zapdos in his deck, it could be bad times. It looks like he's, he's really debating here. Of course, he does not know it's in his prizes. Looks like he's actually going to go ahead and decide on the Nest Ball. There it is. It could be big. Oh, this could be heartbreaking. Nest Ball, where's my Zapdos? Nope. No Zapdos. Oh, you see no. Benny kind of having to reconsider exactly what he's going to do this turn. This could be Evan's route to victory here. Being able to try and steal one for game two. Not at all what Benny wanted to see here off of the Nest Ball. Looks like he's considering taking the Tapu Koko Prism Star. It's such a defeated look right now. Ops for that Spirit Tomb. Going to have a little battle of Spirit Tomb here. Yeah, it looks like it. Spirit Tomb, Majirachi on both sides. Oh, no, that's board. four Electro Power in his hand. Excuse me. And those aren't going to do too much here with that Spirit Tomb, with that Jirachi. Yeah, and doesn't actually have an energy for the turn. He was looking to Thunder Mountain with the Zapdos, but not grabbing the Rescue Stretcher means he's going to have to find a way to try and cobble together and attack this turn. Starts off with the Guzma to try to Stellar Wish again. I'll bring up that oh. you <laughs> Hit the Stellar Wish. Rescue Stretcher now, but no way to retreat here. Means he might just pass this turn. Does wisely choose to take the Rescue Stretcher, but it does look like he's just going to be passing the turn here after building some spite. And back on Evan, who really has uh, been gifted here. He just needs to uh, kind of press his advantage, and this could be his route to victory. Yeah, such an awkward hand from Benny. I don't know if he'll be able to overcome the onslaught of Anguish Cry here. 
Tyler Wish nets an ultra ball for Evan. Brings up that ditto, kind of shutting off and out of drawing Zeep Strika to try to get some more energy for Benny here. Yeah, knowing, knowing when to target down your opponent's uh, ditto Prism Star has been a huge thing this weekend as well. Ditto Prism Star is such a powerful, flexible card. Does he have the energy in his hand? I believe there's a rainbow. But no. Nope, just has to pass the turn back. Lightning energy off the top of the deck for Benny. So he does have a play here. Rescue Stretcher for the Zapdos. Attach the lightning to the ditto. Thunder Mountain retreat. Take the knockout. It's something. Yeah, Benny now with four prizes remaining. Oh, but gets an escape board off his prizes here. These players are Pretty playing good so fast. Karachi, but Evan has already um, stellar wished into his Cynthia. Now we're going to see an ultra ball here. Yeah, a Ranguru from Sun and Moon with that instructability, something we haven't really seen played here much at all. Kind of fallen by the wayside for better, more support, like better support Pokemon like Detonate GX and more Marshadow. But here is that Cynthia found off the Stellar Wish here. Evan will be shuffling his hand into his deck, drawing six new cards. And what is he hoping for here? Uh, well, he, would, he already has the knockout with Retaliate on Umbreon, uh, which puts a lot of pressure again on Benny. Again, playing those two Zapdos is going to be crucial in this matchup. Yeah, Benny is going to win here. He is going to need to find ways to recur that lone Zapdos that he has left. Here is that Umbreon. Here is that Retaliate. Here is the price card for Evan. Players tied 4-4. Four to four. Right. He draws a Cynthia that could be great here. Shuffle away the insane number of four Electro Power in his hand. Opts not to play any of them. Really hoping for a Buzzswool here so he can Sledgehammer take the knockout on this Umbreon. It looks like he was considering maybe trying to thin out the deck by playing some of them, but just decided to put them all back, shuffle, and draw another six. Yeah, well, you don't want to waste those, especially when something like Umbreon takes two to knock out with your Zapdos. And he knows, oh, I only have one Rescue Stretcher left. My Zapdos is in the discard. The other one's in the prizes. I'm probably not going to attack with a Lightning Pokemon this turn. Very, very important resources oh. there. He does hit the Buzzwool, but... Buzzful, but no fighting or no rainbow energy here. And again, we see a switch and Ultra Ball. Ops for the Ultra Ball has a couple of Nest Ball in hand as well as a Guzma, Lily, and a Lightning Energy. Looks like Nest Ball and Lily down to the Ultra Ball. Yep, and Ultra Ball gets that Zeep Strika. He's really digging for a way to attack with this Buzzful. So you can bench the Buzzful, play the Nest Ball. Getting ready for a sprint. This is going to be a big sprint here. I suspect that Tapu Koko Prism Star joining the party from the Nest Ball. All right. Really looking for Beast Energy or Rainbow here. Here we go. Sprint. Yeah, sprint. Four cards. It does not no. get there. And with a full bench, he's able to use that Tapu Koko Prism Star to maybe attack with this Tapu Koko GX this turn. He still gets the knockout. So we see the Electro Power. We see one energy onto the Zip Striker, one energy onto the Buzzwool. We just see a retreat oh. to the Zip Striker and a head bolt. Yeah, well, this is the safe play because that Spear Tomb on the bench with the Hustle Belt is very threatening right now, especially against 170 HP GX Pokemon like Tapu Koko GX. So, actually, just choosing to attack with the Zeep Striker here. Four damage counters on it already. There is that oh, no. Black Market Prism Star. Such a powerful Stadium card in a matchup like this where you're just trading knockouts turn after turn. Yeah, for trading knockouts, your opponents aren't actually taking prizes, a very easy way to swing the game in your favor. Right, well, there we see an Anguish, anguish cry. cry for 150 damage. Evan now pulling ahead for the first time in this series. Three prizes to four on Benny's side. Benny's dealing with some unfortunate cards in the prizes. We've seen him struggle with that Zapdos all game. Here is yet another Stellar Wish. Yeah, not what you're looking for here if you're Benny. Guzma and a Lily. 
probably could opt for something like the Lily. We see that Ultra Ball in his hand. He could thin it out. Also, what looks like a Mars Shadow. Taking a look at those cards, just saying which one will bring me this much closer to victory. It looks like it is that escape board immediately gets attached to the bench Jirachi. Oh, it was the Drift Loom, my mistake. And there is an Ultra Ball from Benny getting rid of the Drift Bloom you just talked about. Yeah, he's really struggling though. That Sludge Hammer from Buzzswole no longer doing a ton of damage, but 30 damage will still be enough to take a knockout on all of Evan's attackers. Yeah. He just needs to find that energy. So this Lily's gonna come up huge. We see that Blitzel hits the bench off of that Ultra Ball, and of course the Lily with no cards left in hand, six cards. Well, there is the Rainbow, two of them, but I do not see a replacement stadium here opting for his one Shrine of Punishment, his only stadium left. This Black Market Prism will just put in a lot of work. It looks like Benny just went ahead and retreated to his other Jirachi, used another Stellar Wish in hopes to find something to get him out of this tough position here. Maybe something like an escape rope or that stadium, but does not find it. Has an Ultra Ball for next turn to get a Zeep Strika. But other than that, probably going to pass the turn here. An Ultra Ball in hand off of that Stellar Wish. Yep. Pair of Rainbow Energy in hand as well, but again, not doing too much as long as that Black Market Prism Star is in play. Yeah, and this is one of the more unassuming Prism Stadiums that have come out. We haven't really seen it too much just because when you play it, it doesn't really affect the board. Uh, you have to, it's very reactive to what your opponent's doing. And with everyone playing a bunch of Stadium cards, kind of didn't see the play it deserved. But being able to deny your opponent prizes is something that you should really not underestimate. Yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, I think we're seeing a little bit of confusion here um, where Benny had already retreated in the turn. He retreated the first Jirachi to the second one. Um, tried to retreat again, but it, I think he just has a... Judge has reminded him of that, and he has a switch in hand. It's something we've seen. It's a pretty common thing. You're, you have so many switch effects, and you want to retreat your Jirachi so often that... Uh, I mean, you do 20 things in a turn with Stellar Wish. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that he just retreated his Jirachi um, the old-fashioned way the first one um, yeah. earlier in the game, earlier in the turn, rather. So from the looks of it, he will be able to take a knockout this turn and keep, or, or not keep up with the prize trade. Yeah, so we do see that switch being used, that Spear Tomb becoming active, and we're going to see a knockout, but again, we do not see Benny reach for the prizes because of that Black Market Prism Star. Yeah, one good thing he has going for him with <laughs> having to attack with the Spear Tomb, the stadium also works for him. Yep, uh, Spirit Tomb is a darkness type Pokemon with a darkness energy in the form of that rainbow attached to it, so it's going to work both ways here and really slow down this uh, back and forth prize trade. Now it's going to be turned into a back and forth knockout trade. <laughs> yeah, basically, like, I'm going to keep attaching energies and taking a knockout. Sure, I won't get prizes, but eventually I'll be able to get there. Yeah, the knockouts still you know, do matter. They eliminate Pokemon on the board, they eliminate resources from your opponent, but they don't actually advance you directly in uh, winning the game via taking prizes. And there we see the Rescue Stretcher retreat to the Stellar Wish, looking for something here. Ops for the Pokegear. Takes the Pokegear off of the Stellar Wish, of course. Had the option for a Guzma as well, I believe. Yeah, well, definitely looking for an energy. That's one thing he's lacking. Could he find a Cynthia off this? No. So he misses again. And with a ton of cards in his hand, he just has to pass the turn. Not able to instruct here. And this could be the opening Benny needs. Now being able to take a knockout on the Jirachi or anything on the bench if he chooses to and be able to take a prize. No energy in sight for Evan. Yeah, so many struggles for Benny in this game, but it looks like he may... Um, have pulled ahead here to do some unfortunate luck on the part of Evan. And he's just going to immediately knock out that Jirachi and tie things up here. Three prizes, two, three replacement Jirachi with the escape board immediately gets promoted. 
Pokemon Communication shuffling back that Honchkrow GX. Both of these players very much so do not want to get their GX Pokemon in play. They know this matchup, and they know it's a grindy one for sure. Pokemon Communication turns that Honchkrow GX into a yet another Jirachi, of course. I'm going to take a minute to review the remaining cards left in his deck. As it's, uh, it's going to be a close one. Three prizes, two, three. Black Market Prism star doing a lot of work here. Yeah, now helping Benny. Yeah, absolutely. That Spirit Tomb is kind of a quote unquote protected by that Black Market Prism star. Of course, the Spirit Tomb will fall, but no prizes will be taken. All right, Stellar Wish does hit the Viridian Forest, bumping that Black Market Prism. That means knocking out the Spear Tomb will take another prize for Evan and put him two prizes left to even up this game in finals. So goodbye to the Black Market Prism. We just have a Viridian Forest now going to help Evan with some of his energy woes from last turn as well. Now we could see the Umbreon come in and take the prize. We could see the Spear Tomb come in and take the prize. Or even bench a new one building spite and do that, but opts for the retaliate here. You see, it did a Prism Star hit the bench. The Umbreon get that energy, retaliate for the knockout. Just two prizes remaining for Evan, two Benny's three here. Once again, Jirachi becomes the active Pokemon. We're going to see a Stellar Wish. Looks like Switch Rescue Stretcher opts for the Switch here. And he remember, he could be setting up a big play next turn for Ferramosa Buzzwool GX to kind of steal this game away again. Yeah, Ferramosa Buzzwool GX made a big, big impact in the first game, just kind of dominating it. And hasn't, has been nowhere to be found in the second game, but it might be time. Has that Nihiligo being able to copy any attack on your opponent's side of the field, but looking to discard it instead. Uh, not really many good attacks you can copy against this deck. Looks like we are going to turn that Jirachi into a basic energy via Evans Viridian Forest. Oh, it was like on the top the, of the deck. The lone lightning energy left in the deck for Benny. See the one on the board as well attached to that Buzzwall. And so he has the knockout here with the Buzzwall if he chooses to. Uh, also has the knockout with something like Nihiligo. And there's two of the cards he really needs, that Beast Energy and the Pheromosa Buzzwool to seal the game next turn, along with the Guzma. He could take the Guzma and try to set that play up. Looks like that's what he's going to choose to do. Guzma joins the hand from the Stellar Wish. Yeah, watching his games in top four, he was playing against a Zapdos mirror match, and that Pheromosa Buzzwool came in huge, taking the game for him, game one, and he's looking to win the North American International Championships with it. And we see an Ultra Ball come down for Benny here, perhaps finding that Pheromosa Buzzwall we've been talking about. Yeah, we yeah. could even see it this turn and just mean, okay, well now I can use the Guzma next turn and I'll win anyway. Yeah, Benny setting up similar plays from before, decides to go with that Pheromosa Buzzwall GX. Big tag team hits the bench. We mentioned earlier that neither of these players really wanted to see their GXs. That's why uh, Evan was able to communicate away the Haunch Crow. But in the case of Fermosa and Buzzwall, it just presents such a unique, powerful effect that it's completely worth it. We see the rainbow energy. There's the Guzma bringing up that Spirit Tomb with the Hustle Belt attached. And there we see the Beast game. Just a single prize left for Benny Billinger here. Only a single prize in the way of him becoming the North America International Champion for the 2019 season. Yeah, and we know he has that Guzma, or he used the Guzma. He used so, the Guzma. Uh, Evan will need to find a way to possibly attack with a fresh Umbreon this turn, evolving the Ditto Prism. Uh, really his only out to surviving here. Finds the Adventure Bag off of the Stellar Wish. One of the cards you don't see too often, but being able to search your deck for two Pokemon tool cards and put them in your hand, uh, pretty good when you're playing cards like Hustle Belt and Escape Board. You know, it looks like we 
Um, all right, this game's going to come right down to the wire here. We have one prize remaining for Benny, just two for Evan. There's another Umbreon joining the party. Darkness Energy on that EV. Yeah, well, so this is what he needed to do. Umbreon is the hardest thing for Benny to knock out, which is saying something because it's not that hard to knock out in general. <laughs> uh, and he is looking to ride this thing to victory here, only needing two prizes. Does he have something like a Guzma here? A pair of Hustle Belts gets detached. He does not have a Guzma, but he does have a Cynthia, does Evan. So going to refresh his hand to a new six cards. And he will be doing 120 damage to that Pheromosa Buzzwool, and then next turn could possibly try to clean it up. And there we go. We see, we do see the retreat. We do see the retaliate. We do not see a building spite on the bench spear tomb, though. And now it is back to Benny. He needs to find a Guzma here. Has a switch. Oh, just has the knockout in the Zapdos. And there you go. Benny Billinger just takes the game and the championship here, is able to avenge his loss from last year, and it is now your junior division national or North American International Championship. Congratulations to Benny Billinger. Coming this far last year as well as you said, actually in the, on the loser side of the final table, but this year he has avenged his loss. He and the along with Faramosa, but and Buzzwool as well as Zapdos have taken down this tournament and given him the crown of international champion. Thanks guys, I am here with Benny. Benny, how does it feel to be called the North America International Champion? I mean, it feels great. Um, I'm relieved of what an awesome tournament I had. Uh, I wanna say congratulations to all the competitors in this tournament. You all did a fantastic. That is fantastic sportsmanship. Thank you, Benny. Now there are lots of people out here who look very happy. They're encouraging you. Is there anyone you wanna say hi to or thanks to? Um, I'd like to shout out my mom, my dad, my sister, Daphne. Uh, I'd like to shout out my coach, Daniel Altavilla, for giving me the Zappy list and encouraging me to play it. Um, there's a lot more. I'd like to thank Mark Dizon for helping me get my mental uh, game focused. And there's just so much more. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to congratulate Evan on making finals. Uh, he was a great opponent, and yeah. Now, there are a lot of people who are probably watching you and thinking, I want to be there someday. I want to stand on that stage as the champion. What advice would you give those people? I would give advice to practice a lot, um, focus, uh, just be who you are and play the game. That's great advice. Thank you, Benny. Congratulations. Let's hear it one more time for Benny. And guys, we'll be right back after a quick break with more from the North America International Championship.